All right, so that was Holmes and Moriarty. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, let me say, this is the second time I've shot this review. So I shot the review and the playthrough and everything once already, uh, had some issues with it, and so I had to redo it. I took that uh, opportunity to completely redo my print and play. So originally when I uh, was sent the print and play files to this, I printed them out, I sleeved them, and just threw them together really quick. Now, not knowing what this, I'm not big into the Sherlock Holmes um, lore, I don't know much about it, so to me this was more about the, the idea behind the game, and it really is a, an abstract game. Um, with, the, with the Holmes and Moriarty theme on top of it. Now, if you're a fan of Holmes and Moriarty, I'm sure you'll enjoy it for that fact because it is very visually stunning and it references locations and people from the series. So, you know, that, that's a plus if you're a fan of Holmes and Moriarty. Now, I am indifferent on it, so to me, it was more of an abstract with the, the theme on top of it, uh, which was fine. Uh, I love the look and the visual of the game. So. Like I said, uh, when I had issues with the first run through and recording and everything, I took that to re completely redo this because just doing it like this, we have played this a ton. Um, this has become a very surprising um, enjoyment for my wife and I. You know, um, her and I sat down to play through this uh, a number of times just to get an understanding of the game, and we both really enjoyed it. And, and we played it a lot in succession uh, the first evening we played it. So much so, as you can see, I decided to make a little more uh, legitimate print and play. Um, so th let's start with the art on the game. I, I absolutely love the art. Um, I love the calm muted colors. Um, I really, really appreciate the fact that even though these cards are colored and suited, in addition to colors, there's also letters to go along with it. So that means if you're playing this with somebody who's colorblind or if you are colorblind, you are still fully able to play this game. Um, there should be no limitations with, with that. So I, I always love when that is um, implemented into a game, the consideration for colorblind people, because you never know when you might be playing with somebody who might not be able to enjoy the game as a result of, of color deficiencies. Um, I love the fact that these the playing card backs, I don't know if you can see, they're very vintage looking and they look very sharp. They look um, just like old fashioned, old fashioned cards. So I can't say enough about the, the art, I, I really like the art of the game. Now again, the gameplay is pretty simplistic when you think about it over, overall. Um, you're just trying to score the highest trick and then you can play tic-tac-toe and get three in a row and win. But the strategy in this game is very, very in-depth because Holmes scores the clue row and Moriarty scores the crime row. Now, with that in mind, the way you play as Holmes and the way you play as Moriarty are completely different because figure Moriarty is trying to get a trump card, wants to play a high card, but what if he wants to score the number four? Um, he's going to play the green four, but what are the odds of him getting that as trump? So you know, you see kind of how you're going to look at the hand that you have before you pass it over to your opponent to make sure, while he needs this card, I want to take this out so he can't get it. Um, you know, you're kind of feeding them the cards or maybe you're going to play a card that you don't want and, and risk not getting any spaces because there's already a cube there just because you don't want your opponent to be able to, to score that card. So it's really cool with regards to that. So there is a lot of strategy inside of this game. All in all, the gameplay is pretty quick. You can play, I would say you can get a game of this in about ah, 15 minutes, maybe less, maybe 10 minutes. Um, but there is so much strategy and it's so um, dynamic that the desire to play again and again is there. Uh, I really, really enjoy the fact that in, in this game, it, it condenses very well to where all you really have is a deck of cards and a score sheet. And if you want, you don't even really need the score sheet, and I don't know how this is gonna be for the actual uh, final copy. I used it, the, the back side of these cards, but you have a, a mini score sheet on the back of, of one of your cards. So I don't know if this is gonna be in the final game. It was in the print and play, and it seemed logical that this was the way it'd be put together. Uh, but even so, I mean, you could take the scorecard and you could fold it up and take it with you. Um, and then you don't need these cubes. These are cubes that I have from just a, another game. Uh, what we used when we first played this was we used coins, uh, copper, and the silver. 
you know, indicated who was who, but it's, it's a very, very portable game. But all in all, we absolutely love this game, so I would definitely recommend this game. All right, guys. Well, I'm Lee from Geek City USA. Thanks for hanging out with us and checking out this review. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff, and go ahead and check us out on Facebook and interact with me. Reach out on the group or in the comments below. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll check you out next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.